our uh, over planning producers uh, organizing incredibly complex events, are you? Um, because I have been um, working with an incredible team on this for several weeks. And of course, the one thing I didn't finish was my own presentation. Um, so we're going to be speaking from the heart, but I think that's okay because I have been kept awake at night every night for the past several weeks thinking about what I'm going to say. So I'm, I'm going to, all right, we're just going to go with it, going to trust the performance instincts. Um, and I also do have a few images that um, my part of my team, Lauren, uh, pulled together for me because the most important thing I want to express here is honestly a little bit of the kind of spiritual stuff to start with, right? It's... Um, I'm glad you mentioned the future and like opportunities in the future because uh, I've had a few years of futurelessness, I'd say, since over the past few years, it has been increasingly hard um, for those of us who are sensitive to the world, for those of us who are sensitive to our ecology, to our community, to injustice, to uh, politics, you know, it has been very, very hard to look forward. Um, if you have been having that feeling, I have been having that feeling too. Um, it is very hard to imagine that life in 10 years looks anything like this life. Um, and I've been trying to figure out how to navigate that. It could look nothing like this life because a lot of the creature comforts and structures that a lot of people I care about have spent generations building are you know, swept away or made irrelevant. It could be that technology and comfort advances to the rate where we don't recognize what's happening. Now, it is very hard to tell <laughs> which of those is going to be or what's going to happen. We do know Alaska is going to be a point of radical change as the poles melt. We know that. We don't know what that looks like. Um, I still have old timers in my community worried about population loss. I'm like, I, I, don't, I don't know that that's the thing you need to worry about, friend. Um, I'm worried about some Elon Musk coming and setting up in town. and. Uh, you know, but trying to buy out the local government. I want to future proof us against that. You be quiet, phone. Um, <laughs> um, in these years of not being able to see forward, which I think is part of an artist's craft, is looking ahead. Um, honestly, the feeling of just blankness of maybe, are we going to fall off a cliff? Is there an end there? Like what, what, because I couldn't see past it. It felt like there's just a curtain drop, just nothing. And that ground me to a halt for a couple of years. I don't, I would be embarrassed to say that, except I know I'm not alone. And I know there are some people in our audience in online and here and who will watch this later who are going through capital D difficulties right now um, and who have gone. And I, I kind of don't like conferences that don't stop and just like say that. We're artists, we can talk about this, right? We don't have to pretend like that's not something that is happening to us and people we love. Um, and I have so much love for the folks in my community experiencing this. And I just wanna share that the thing that helped me move from a total stop, I would say, in 2019, before, before pandemic, 2019, 2020, being able to move forward from just a total stop of I can't see what comes next, I don't know what's next in my career, no more albums, touring, the money doesn't work out anymore, streaming is, you know, eating my lunch and, and, and I'm, my lower back's getting older and oh my God, oh my God. Um, into that futurelessness, I realized something and that is that there is no human future of any kind under any circumstances without music. There is no human future without arts. As long as there are humans in Alaska, as long as there are Alaskans, there will be Alaskan music. And as long as there have been Alaskans for 10, 15,000 years, there has been Alaskan music, right? This is, this is something, the whole world can change around us. The computers can make all the music they want. Have fun, guys. It won't stop us, because we can't stop. Music is not a thing we do to make money. It's not a thing we do because it's fun. It's not a thing we do because it's frivolous. It's a thing we do because it is a fundamental trait of our species. And I will say this all the time. It's like birds do their little songs. It's like bees do their little dances. Like, that's a thing we do. And we will not stop. Have fun, computers, whatever. We're not gonna stop. And that understanding has made it possible for me to start moving forward again, because I realized that if there is a future in human music, 
no matter what else happens, than time spent building that future and building a community that is robust in that future and that takes care of each other in that future is time well spent, right? Like making that art is a thing I do because I'm a human and making it possible for other people to make more art sustainably here where I live is work that, I mean, I don't know, some things are gonna work, some things aren't. Some of our little initiatives are gonna work, some aren't, but that work is worth doing, right? Um, and I know a lot of y'all are on this boat with me. So um, anyway, light subject to start, but also like, I just, I don't know, I, 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 I'm a lyricist, I write real things. I'm really not interested in pretending. I'm interested in telling the truth here because a lot of you guys, and your music has told the truth to me. Um, part of working on our playlist project, our little Spotify games that we've been playing, right? It's, it's ramshackle, it's piecemeal, right? Like it'll take several weeks for us to get back to people or whatever, but we've processed thousands of songs by Alaskan artists at this point. Sometimes people send us three whole albums and like, we're like, well, we can only put three songs you know, on here, but we, okay, here we go. And the thing is my ears have been full of your music all year. And so of the folks who've worked on this, it's a really fun project. It really wakes you up, man. My Spotify wrapped was 100% Alaska Indie, which is a category. I think Spotify invented because of that account, just like <laughs> trying to find every Alaskan band. Because you can't sort bands by geography. We had to do that work. We had to tell the algorithm what was what. I don't like Spotify. I don't support them. But if they're going to use us, we're going to use them right back, right? All right, there's a lot of people trying to use musicians. There's always been a lot of people trying to use musicians. I don't think there was a golden age. They were, I don't think there was a golden age when we were all perfectly paid and compensated and comfortable. I just don't think that existed. It has always been a hustle, um, and it has always been a little bit tough. But the, the elements that make it work and that make it worthwhile are when you have a community to get, when you have a community to catch you when you have other people looking out for you, when you have community built structures that you can rely on, right? Um, and I've spent the last couple of years essentially immersed through this work with Akimi and hey, what did people do that made it better where they live, you know? If touring's getting harder, if streaming's eating our lunch, I really feel like the future of music is local. The future of music is us believing in and fostering the music we're making and expanding that definition of music to include all the people that we usually forget, right? Um, which brings me to the more talky part of my talk. Um, <laughs> um, uh, people are always surprised when they come to this conference um, and or they come to any Akimi event and they, I think we unintentionally bring our biases into the room as far as imagining everyone's here for what we're here for, right? I'm a female indie singer-songwriter who toured and slept on couches, right? I accidentally put that out into the world. Oh yeah, other, other traveling musician wandering troubadour types, right? Um, who like to play sh shows at comic conventions. I don't know why, but, um, but we have people represented here from the whole of music, right? There are a lot of jobs in music despite what parents tell the kids these days. There's a lot of jobs. There are folks here who are educators and who are at their absolute pinnacle of understanding music pedagogy, right? There are folks here who are instrumentalists and vocalists and composers, yes, but there are also luthiers. There are also instrument creators. There are also music therapists. There are also bookers and presenters. There are promoters. There are venues. There are festival organizers. Um, and there are even more niche, 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 niche things that we've started learning about. So I think that the challenge um, that I would invite all of you to, that has been my year essentially, is when I think of musician, to start really blowing up that image of what is a musician. And uh, not just think of me and other people like me, not just think of other indie bands putting songs on Spotify, but to think of our elderly Athabascan fiddler neighbor, right? To think of the community dance hall, to think of people playing in worship services, to think of the local cantor at the synagogue, right? To think of people getting together and jamming in the backyard, and to think of people going Christmas caroling and annoying their neighbors, right? All of this, all of this is music. Our community theater, the musicals, the pit orchestra, right? The folks working with the dance groups, the wedding DJs, the people playing in clubs late at night, even I have no idea who wrote 
the twin dragon Mongolian barbecue jingle. <laughs> but if that is not an enduring piece of Alaskan culture, <laughs> that kind of commercial music, that is work in our sector. That is part of our circle, right? So um, this summer we undertook the Alaska Music Census, which is very hard to explain to people. <laughs> And I got very tired of doing it, but a lot of y'all took it, and thank you. Oh my God, thank you. We had a tremendous response rate to the Alaska Music Census, and I bet it was a weird thing to see, right? I bet it was weird. We did all the talking we could. We talked our heads off, me and the music ambassadors that I worked with. I should have had a list up here, but some of them are Kat Moore, Carrie Pavish, Anderson, Zach Pease, Lisa Denny, Lisa Puanani Mohala Ikalani Denny, um, and uh, oh, Emily Anderson, um, and more. And if I'm forgetting someone, I'm so sorry. I did not sleep very much. Um, all of these working musicians went out and got their friends and neighbors to take a stupid survey, but that is miraculous. It really is, because when we have data, we can start putting ourselves on the map. We can start saying, here's who's out here, here's how much they're earning, here's how much we're contributing to the local economy, um, which is something that certain people are interested in. I'm half interested in that. Like, I'm half interested in the opportunity in our economy. I'm also half interested in some of the other questions we got to ask, because we did the survey ourselves. We did it with a lot of support. We did a lot of support from ICER, Portland Music. Um, but we took the survey ourselves, which means we own the data. And some of the questions we asked were, how many hours are you putting into your music? Because to me, that's a more important measure of the cultural relevance. And it also allows us to do the nice little mathematical trick of, okay, how many hours per week did you play music? How much did you earn? How much is that really per hour? Like something that I think people who pay for gigs don't always appreciate. Um, so I uh, was going to have a lot of really nice slides for you um, about that. I have a couple, um, but not all the fancy numbers. We will, however, be sharing all of the fancy numbers in your email wrap up that comes right after this. Um, I have a few, I do, a few things I do want to say. One is that all the surveys, most of the surveys that we looked at early on as models asked us to essentially divvy up um, both our Alaska music sector and the roles in that sector, right? Like how many venues of this kind, how many of that kind, how many businesses of this kind, how many businesses of that kind, um, how many people are educators, how many people are artists, how many people are doing another music job, presenters, bookers, etc. cetera. Um, and uh, how much activity is in which part of the state. Um, that's fine. Um, and that, that kind of comports with, I'm a big science nerd, I really, uh, it's embarrassing, but like, that comports with the understanding I was taught of the natural world, that things divide into categories, and then you measure the category and you see how much is each one. Um, but the fact is, both in the scientific world and in the world around me, as I start to question some of the values I was handed down, values like hierarchy, values like false binaries, um, I start to realize that things aren't quite that simple. Um, things don't divvy up that way. And when I actually look at the world around me, when I look at you guys, and as I comb through the data on all the people that we surveyed, like what we see is actually this, right? We see, can I go backwards? There we go. Yeah, there's a good old tumbleweed, right? We see many, many points of connection at every turn. We see evolving and changing nodes. We see little key points that can you know, then move and, and establish a new identity, try a new thing, pull back, do whatever, right? People playing many roles, businesses playing many roles. It's Alaska, we're all Swiss Army knives, right? That's one of our greatest strengths. That's one of our greatest assets. Um, this is more, when, when I actually look at nature, and try and cut it up into little pieces like that. It doesn't work for me. And this is why I'm really happy that the language in our, in our field has started to talk about music as an ecosystem more than an economy. That makes a lot more sense. It just makes a lot more sense. When you look at us, when you think of Alaska music statewide, and you think of the little players and the big players, and the movement and the growth and the change, that to me is an ecosystem. That makes a lot more sense. Some of it happens for free, some of it happens for pay, and it takes on its own unique shape, which Lauren thankfully found this very cool picture. I want, I want this chair. Um, <laughs> um, the reason that that's important to understand is that um, 
the data we got told us some really cool things about the people we surveyed, but some of the most important things to me, um, we got money data, that's cool. It told us things that would take, we should do an hour on that instead of a few minutes. Um, but it also told us that the average number of roles a person plays. We asked how many roles do you play? Take all that apply. Not just which one are you? Are you an artist? Are you a presenter? Are you a whatever? It was which all things do you do, right? And the average number was in the neighborhood of three or four, right? The, our, our, our average and median were very high for that. We asked people not just are you in a band? We asked how many bands are you in, in an average year? And guess what? Y'all are in a lot of bands. Um, <laughs> The majority of people were in two or more ensembles. Like, if you were in an ensemble, if you said, yes, I am in some kind of ensemble, um, the median number that you were in is 2.48. I don't know who the 0.48 is, but I've been in bands like that. So, um, <laughs> so uh, one of my other favorite things was that we asked not only where are you based right now, like where are you based for the money purposes of this survey, uh, oh, this is not, I'm not, that's not my passcode. This is the passcode of someone else that I need to use. Um, not only where are you based right now, but which other multiple Alaskan communities are you connected to? And 30% said, I'm connected to more than one Alaska community. Like, yes, I live in Anchorage, but I have a really strong connection to Naknek. Yes, I live in Homer but I identify as being from Nanilchik, right? Like these are important to me. These are very important. And even when it came to primary community, and I'm gonna have to scroll a little bit, pardon me here, to get to it. Um, our primary communities list was incredibly impressive to me. I mean, we heard from Delta Junction, we heard from Heidelberg, we heard from Cake, we heard from Port Lyons and Soldovia and St. Mary's. We heard from Unalakleet. We heard from Willow, we heard from Healy, we heard from Hope. And to me, that is gorgeous. That is absolutely gorgeous. And those were primary communities, not secondary. Um, but at least 30% of people said that they were from multiple communities. I'm sorry, 20% of people said that they have a connection to more than two communities besides their primary. Um, and that's why, that, that's only the beginning of the reason why this ecosystem concept is important to me. Um, and I am looking at my time here. And it's time for me to wrap it up. So <laughs> I care about this a lot. Um, I care about you a lot. More important than giving you a specific number, which I can do better in the wrap up anyway, um, <laughs> which is coming sometime next week after we've all slept a little. Um, more important than that is to make sure that you understand that whatever your role is in this ecosystem, it is crucial. If you are the leaf litter and the compost, if you are the deep old roots, if you are the teeny baby branches, just doing one leaf at a time, or if you're a big strong branch supporting a lot of other people, like none of that is irrelevant. None of that is superfluous. And just like any other ecosystem, you can put things into it, you can do things to it that make it unhealthy. And you can do things to it that make it healthy, right? So this is our opportunity to think about it like that and think, okay, what can we do with this kind of beautiful little, little natural wonder that we have here? What makes it healthy? What's the fertilizer? What's the water? What's the clean air that we inject into this to give it durability through whatever changes are ahead and to support more people making music in the way that they want to make music in their community? Big community, small community, part-time, full-time, making money, never making money. And impractical or practical, whatever it is, um, how do we enrich this and see all of ourselves as a piece of it, just as much as the musician doing the absolute opposite thing. Whatever the, the, the thing that is the most different from what we are doing in this music ecosystem, we are a part of it, we are connected to them, and our fate is tied to theirs. And that's why I'm very excited about pursuing solutions that are good for us individually, but starting to think of this as solutions that are good for all of us. Um, I'm gonna conclude, and we're gonna move into the next portion of our day with some of our spotlight videos, which we solicit from artists statewide. If you wanna do this sometime in the next year or so, just get in touch. Welcome from the Anchorage Folk Festival. I'm Marianne, past president with... John Osman, current board president. Anchorage Folk Festival is a community-based, member-driven, volunteer-run, non-profit based in Anchorage, Alaska. 
Our purpose is to perpetuate an annual folk arts festival with live performances and the broadest representation of the performers in our community. And we've done this for 35 years, and it's all free. It's an annual festival the last two weekends of January, mostly at the University of Alaska Anchorage, with performances in the Wendy Williamson Auditorium. We feature main stage acts, professional guest artists, workshops, dances, a raffle, and all the details for the festival can be found at anchoragefolkfestival.org. We'll see you at the see Wendy. See you there. Hi, I'm Harmony. And I'm J-Bo. And we make instrumentals. I like playing guitar, piano, violin, and I like singing too. And I like playing piano and recording artists when they come into the studio. The reason why I like making instrumentals is because I get to use different instruments and I get to make a beat. And then I get to put it on my YouTube channel and give it away for free. That way other artists can use it. So one change that we want to do this year is to actually open up the studio a little bit more for artists to actually do more of a in-studio performance. Now, we're not actually gonna be recording in different takes to make a record, but for you to come in and to actually perform one or two of your tracks. How much does it cost? Nothing. What is the age requirement? None. If you're ready to perform at any age, from five to 55, well then come in. Hit us up on our Facebook page, Harmony and J-Bo Audio, if you ever wanted to come through and perform one or two of your tracks. Or hit me up on my Facebook page, J-Bo Audio. All right, that was it for today. Bye, see ya. One. Hello Alaska Music Summit, my name is Sarah Felder. I'm a percussionist from Fort Worth, Texas, currently residing in Anchorage, Alaska. The year 2023 was a year of a lot of new opportunities, collaborations, and growth for me. From playing with the Anchorage Cabaret Band, to the Spinard Jazz Fest, even the Monday Night Jazz Sessions, at the Fire Island Bakery. I also launched Divine Music Studio where I was able to bring a lot of different musicians together for further collaborations. And I began giving private drum lessons as an instructor. Lastly, at the end of 2022, I launched a band called Wasabi Black. And in 2023, we traveled the state of Alaska playing on stages anywhere from Seward to Girdwood to Fairbanks, even the Alaska Airline Center. Moving into 2024, you can catch me almost every Sunday at New Season Church. February the 2nd, you can catch Wasabi Black back at Humpy's. And February 23rd, you can catch me at Little Babes playing with Caitlin. Stay tuned for more dates and collaborations to come. Hi, Kimi. My name's Mike Moss. I'm from Juno. I'm a music teacher and artist. My music studio is called Nagoonberry's Music, and I teach piano, guitar, and music production, songwriting theory type lessons. Uh, but my specialty lately has been rock band. Students come and choose a rock band instrument. I teach them the basics. I put them together in groups based on age level and ability, and off we go. It's super fun. Uh, right now, I have bands made up of fourth and fifth graders all the way up to an adult band. I'm also a songwriter and producer, and I put out music under the artist name Blue Nagoon, short for Nagoonberries. And I primarily make vocal pop music these days in various genres, and I like to work with local singers to sing the songs. Last year I put out two albums. The first was called Crestfallen, a chill pop, jazz, lo-fi type album with Alyssa Fisher on vocals. And the second was a synth pop and 80s rock magnum opus called Here Be Dragons, and that features nine different lead singers, six of which were from Juno. Lately I've started producing other people's music, which has been a blast, uh, and it's always great to meet and work with new people. So if any of this stuff sounds interesting to you, please feel free to drop me a line. Uh, yeah, that's me, Mike Moss, Blue Nagoon, signing out. Hi, Alaska Music Summit. Casey Smith Project here from the Golden Heart City of Fairbanks, Alaska. It's been a busy 2023. We had uh, our new album come out, Red Lights and Whiskey, last February. In April, we got to go to Juneau for the Folk Festival. And over the summer, we made our way to Girdwood for the Forest Fair, to Denali, McCarthy, Palmer, to name a few. 2024 shaping up nice too. We're gonna go to Hawaii for our first out-of-state tour this February. And then in March, first and second, we'll be in Girdwood at the Sitzmark with Sundog. Those dates and all of our new music can be found on our website at caseysmithproject.com.